Blessings everyone, it's time for another installment of New Light Astrology and uh, I'm actually changing the name, going with a bit of an adaptation that I think needs to happen. Um, no longer calling it the incoming wave, but calling it the evolving field reading because uh, it definitely feels like things have changed up quite a bit since the December solstice in that, yes, you know, waves occur every once in a while. Um, but in particular with this reading, it doesn't necessarily feel so much like a lot of new waves so much as evolving uh, turns and evolving shifts that are going on with the energy field of the planet and of the collective uh, as a lot of these new energies and new frequencies really amp up their integration. And so instead of focusing on incoming, you know, putting it out in the future, we're going to call it evolving field because the evolving energy field, evolving collective field, evolving uh, quantum field, however you want to look at it. I think that's actually going to not only serve much more, I also feel that that is actually more accurate, especially with the way the, the 2021 is all about the now. And remember, when we're talking about the astrology, we are talking specifically about what is going on with the collective and the planet as a whole throughout this week. And if you are interested in more sign-specific talk, you might want to sign up for my Patreon by following the links below on Fridays at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, U.S. and Canada, usually. Uh, sometimes it might be at a different time of day. We actually go through and talk about how all of this affects the signs and, you know, what uh, may come up for the signs and how things are getting emphasized according to different houses and, of course, doing a Q&A and going long form with that and going real deep. And if you ever want to get a session with me, you can always go ahead to my website, integrativemysticism.com. Now, we will not be covering the full moon this in this session because we're actually going to be talking about that in the bi-weeklies when they come out later on this week. Remember, we're doing a bi-weekly system. We are still in the bi-weeklies. And I was trying to actually get them up a bit early, but apparently that was not necessarily uh, my higher self's priority or my higher level's priority. And there was this big, disc you know, sort of, you put the last one up too early. It's not about just constantly looking forward and looking ahead and, you know, and, and kind of uh, taking by the hand in that way. Really, you know, Nico, come back and just focus on the natural intelligence, the natural flow. Wait till you get closer to that lunation. And so, uh, it, you know, those will be coming out here as we get closer to the full moon on the 28th. Of course, uh, for those of you who are new, we talk about this, uh, you know, evolving field formerly known as incoming wave energy. We are talking about things that are actually shifting, amplifying and becoming uh, more constant, you know, it's not just for this week. And I will do my best to make sure that I differentiate when I'm talking about that with the astrology versus, say, the cards that I use to, of course, articulate what's going on with the evolving field. Let's talk about what is going on with the uh, with the cards themselves. Just get that going. And, you know, again, what we're talking about here is what is getting amplified and only going to get stronger as we go through this week and especially February. This is such a powerful emphasis of February and beyond, but February, especially between uh, the 2nd and the 18th, I'm getting is where this wave is going to be prevalent to folks, you know, on, on a vast array of levels of experience and however current or consistent they are with their practice. So for the cards that we got that articulated this evolving uh, field or this evolution in the planetary energy field, we actually got the Four of Pentacles, the Three of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, and Justice. And... As this becomes more of an integrated and prevalent uh, part of our reality experience, this definitely drives home that personal journey emphasis in a much bigger way. Now, we've already talked a bit about that, especially earlier this year and at the end of December, where we're talking about really focus on your microcosm, 
focus on your journey. Remember that you have way more power and sovereignty over your personal journey and your microcosm than maybe you would be misled to believe, even by maybe peers or colleagues that might be, you know, kind of caught up in a lot of distractions. And so it's important to know when to pull your energy back because you really don't want to miss out on what is going on here. Get consistent and current with your practice because all of this, and we talked about this on last Tuesday's Patreon Live, is focusing so much on further embodying those higher levels, that higher self, multidimensional self, the I am presence in such a way that there's actually this protection or sustainment, I guess you could say, of the higher self's priorities, primary higher self priorities being made manifest as interfering energy forms and influences are actually diminished in their prominence and in their influence over your life stream. So protections and sustainment of the higher self's priorities. We talked about this a bit last year. We talked about the through line, right? We talk about your journey, your conscious evolution process, and what your higher self, your future self, your ascended self, your multidimensional self is creating and bestowing upon you and of course, shining through you is actually getting its own level of, um, it's, it's getting a bit of a boost to the point where interfering energy forms, people, or again, thought forms in the collective, distractions and things like that really have no pull and no power over the creations that you put out there when you are working in alignment with your higher self's priorities, when you are in that embodiment state. You're unlocking a lot of caves of the heart. Thank you, uh, for Vanessa. Shout out to Vanessa. That's a perfect example of what's going on. Caves of the heart, um, opening up, understanding more of the truth of everything that you are but also unlocking and empowering more of your own skills, your own talents, both on the physical and the mundane and on the spiritual. We also have higher self-driven connections, physicalizing and reordering social and spiritual groups, big and small. And this is actually something that started last week. This is something that actually began um, I want to say about Sunday, Monday of the week of the, uh, the, the yeah, the, I would say, yeah, Sunday, Monday, uh, the last week. And with this, we have this opportunity for you to connect and meet with those whose, let's just say, higher selves, higher levels are already in interaction, association, and connection and agreement with your higher self. Right? We are reordering social and spiritual groups to be in more organic connections. Now, this can show up in the forms of a lot of new, very advantageous introductions, maybe reintroductions, reunions, and maybe even reintroductions and reunions across lifetimes and revelations of all kinds of different connections that were uh, available that you can have now or available that were premature or whatever the heck's going on there. And with that higher self-driven connection, um, physicalizing, you're also, of course, those of you who are on the path to connect with your soul family, right? Your soul connection in an organic way, right? Going through the over soul and the Godhead connecting to your actual soul family, not, you know, associated by a mundane group affiliation, this is going to help link you up because your higher self, your higher levels are already, already interacting on that. You know, in the live we just did, we actually worked with and sought assistance from the higher levels, uh, the higher selves of even uh, members of our oversoul groups that were not present in the physical so that they could still on a quantum level be a part of that healing exercise that we did. So payoffs and advancements of higher self co-creations are um, something that, again, if you've been on the path for a while, then you know how it goes. You 
manage to achieve things, get some experience points, and all of a sudden you find out that you've leveled up, even though you might not have thought in your lower mind that something was a big deal or something needed to get done, right? Going into chain reaction territory. The payoffs get bigger with this. And you are also going to notice when you start to connect, right? Aligning with your higher levels, aligning with those divine ascended aspects of yourself, which you already are connected to. You just have to remember, get centered, get clear, meditate, open up, you know, release the mental levels and emotional detritus and all of that kind of stuff and allow yourself to align. You're going to find out what those priorities, what those directions really, really are. It's kind of how, um, you know, I, I've kind of observed where doing things in my own life are actually, you know, it's getting a lot easier to pull things off so long as I, of course, stay in alignment with my higher self. It's kind of like making sure my legs are doing what my brain is telling it to do and all of that good stuff. Um, it's a really cool stage of embodiment that goes beyond just sort of calling a higher level on the phone. It's calling it now right through your heart to express through you. And we also have as we teased last week, revelation of your 2021 personal trajectory. So pulling you out of the maelstrom, pulling you out of maybe entanglements, whether they are um, entanglements that have just sort of confused your personal journey, confused your personal trajectory, and sometimes these entanglements are not necessarily negative. Sometimes we can just get so interwoven um, that we accidentally get on the journey of a partner or we get on the journey of a boss or a neighbor or a family member. And it, there, there can be sort of this detour or this pull away from, um, you know, what actually is our personal growth, what is our personal evolution process, what is our original conscious evolution plan as, again, coming through our higher self and higher levels, that revelation is available so it's easier to get clear and stay on your own personal track. It may be very well that, yeah, I mean, for those of you who are getting connected to those higher self-driven um, social connections, those oversoul connections, yeah, then there's going to be some overlap. Absolutely. When it comes to the oversoul stuff and the soul family stuff um, and your higher selves are already connected, sure, there's going to be some overlaps in your trajectory, but your personal journey is still your personal journey. How you get there, what you're doing, what you're leveling up uh, is still going to be very, very personal. The astrology itself very much complements this because we have the sun doing a lot of the work of this week. Again, we're not talking about the full moon or the Mercury retrograde because I'm going to be doing those in other videos. The sun in and of itself in Aquarius is bringing this highlighted focus on your unique expression, your personal touch, your unique journey, your unique divine embodiment, and of course, your own process for getting everything done, how you order your universe, right? How you go about actually being responsible for your creations and what manifests in your reality. You've heard me say it before, even years ago, you're not here to learn how to manifest. You're manifesting constantly. Maybe it's part of your journey to learn how to get your manifestations under your own conscious control. Or maybe you're here to learn how to manifest and uh, change your reality a different way than you used to. And maybe you're here to learn how to step into a space where it's going beyond living manifestation to manifestation. That's where, you know, you, you really want to have your focus, especially at the beginning of this week, because the sun is giving you an opportunity to break away layers of yourself that either are not you in the first place or are um, things that are not applicable to the way you actually express in this world and what your natural organic self is, right? What you truly are and how you actually put that into motion, right? How we are is just as important in our mastery as what we are. In fact, 
it does no good to focus on how we are if we don't know what we are. And it doesn't do any good to focus on what we are if we have no mastery of how we are. So this is now bridging those two priorities to work in a coherent and far more empowered force for everyone to be able to, you know, really do a very big catch up on their journey and uh, really kind of get things back in their proper place. The sun does all of this when he squares Uranus and conjuncts Jupiter, which is going to be occurring uh, the 26th, 27th, depending on where you live in the world. Uranus and Taurus is pulling apart structures, staples, constants, anything that's been stagnating, copying and pasting, or maybe being reused that is actually keeping um, you down in your evolution process. Maybe you're kind of getting stuck in a certain compartment, stuck in a certain area of your growth. Maybe this is preventing change or progress in your life due to the, uh, the structures or containment that could have been actually put on you through uh, what you've been exchanging your energy with, where you are choosing to and not choosing to apply your energy. And the sun square to Uranus is going to be actually giving you a chance um, to have a bit of a wake up. It's a eureka opportunity to understand the difference between um, what you've been doing with your energy that doesn't work, that you keep waiting to see work, and what you need to drop, adopt, employ, or alter in order to actually have a breakthrough. Sun Square Uranus is actually a healing break or a liberating break where you're getting a chance to actually recover or maybe even just release yourself um, when it comes to a situation where maybe a part of your journey or a part of your skill development, a part of your own uh, ascension process had been shelved or tabled due to some kind of commitment or some kind of burden or maybe enlistment that you may have taken on in some way, right? And this can, of course, trickle down into the physical. It could help you with your job. It could, of course, help you with your living situation, relationships, friendships, all kinds of things like that. Because the sun conjunct Jupiter at the same time is also emphasizing and rewarding and healing that which is that pure and true organic path, organic expression of self, and the pure and true organic connections that either your um, higher levels are trying to bring in or your higher levels had already arranged to be in your life. Sun conjunct Jupiter is also going to be emphasizing that higher self priority, getting the biggest rewards, the most abundance when you lean into it, when you give it real time, when you give it real energy, really make room for it. Find a way to make room and apply a creative solution to something that you feel would not give you room. Later on in the week, on Thursday, we have Venus conjunct Pluto, which is actually giving you an opportunity to get uh, something transmuted from a negative situation into a positive situation. So now this might not necessarily be something that is meant to go. I don't want anyone to think that Venus conjunct Pluto is about going and redeeming a dysfunctional toxic situation so that it behaves like a completely different situation. This is not that kind of energy, right? We, we're focusing on health anyway. But with Venus conjunct Pluto, Pluto being the great transmuter, Venus being a very benevolent, very charitable and supportive and affectionate vibration of the divine feminine, we are seeing a chance to heal as well as maybe amp up or empower something that has been mishandled, whether it's a current mishandling or something from the past, Venus conjunct Pluto is also going to be giving you an opportunity uh, to maybe receive some kind of gift that allows you to bring an end to a dysfunctional situation. Venus conjunct Pluto could be um, a very powerful gift that helps you close a chapter or make a transmutation or a transition 
or, um, you know, yeah, a punctuation where it felt like there was something going on in perpetuity and there was no way to end it. With Venus conjunct Pluto, gifts ultimately come, but they are gifts that are meant to enhance you and gifts that you are supposed to invest in yourself and in your own work. So make sure that you're not necessarily just giving it away. On the 1st of February, so the very end of this weekend, we've got the Sun square to Mars. And with the Sun square Mars, right, we've got the Sun in Aquarius, Mars in Taurus. Mars is that divine ascended masculine problem solver, action taker. Sun square to Mars is about revising of an approach to something that you feel may actually be a part of your mission, but maybe we have been employing the wrong tools. Maybe we have been, again, stifling our own creative solutions, our own creative input, or maybe blocking contributions that are more complementary to our journey for whatever reason. Sun square to Mars, we're getting a chance to clear and reverse that. Now, because this is occurring between two fixed signs, there may be, of course, some talks about loyalty and what loyalty may or may not look like in this respect, uh, because sometimes we are needing to pay attention to where we have chained ourselves to a way of thinking or chained ourselves to a person or a path or an employer or a group, something that has nothing to do with the highest interest of all concerned or our highest outcomes or our own highest development. And with the sun square to Mars, we're getting a chance to revise that and overcome any resistance that may actually continue so long as we remain chained to that kind of attachment. Now, the interesting thing is I'm actually getting, this is something that, you know, we ourselves need to pay attention to. Is this something that was taught, right? Uh, sometimes people might have some bad teachings or bad assumptions about loyalty and then create vicious cycles, right? Getting passed down through social conditioning, relationship conditioning, family conditioning. Where is it that your values are actually getting diminished because of an assumption of values or consensus values in a family, in a group, in a business, in a field, in a profession. This is where you're getting a chance to take your leave and accept a great deal of support and abundance here, right? It's all about coming into that unique expression of the way you are ordering your universe and your reality. It's kind of like when people say they look for traditional values. I'm always like, girl, what tradition? What are you talking about? It feels kind of like a copy and paste, like you don't really know what your values are. Time to really pay attention if you're in that position for whatever reason, right? This might not even show up when it comes to family or interpersonal stuff. This might come with a work ethic or maybe solving a certain issue as it relates to um, how you want to go through your spiritual path or how you want to, yes, make your mark on the world, which is a big part of February. So February 1st really kicks it off with like, okay, how you're ordering your universe, how you're manifesting your reality. Are you chained to anything that is going in another direction? Have you been tailgating something? Have you been losing yourself in a crowd or a herd? Unchain yourself. You locked up the chain. You still have the key. You can get out of it. Do not worry about it. And yes, this may indicate some switches when it comes to how you go about um, putting your energy, your affection, your loyalty into certain connections and certain relationships. But it is not about going from one thing to another, right? We're not talking about pendulous swings. We're not talking about wanting to get lost in another thing. We are talking about coming back into your own unique organic expression, your own unique organic true self, true path, true work, true how you really are, and then letting that be what guides you to what resonates, enhances, and amplifies the reward, the prosperity, and the evolution that comes from that. So that's what I've got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it.
If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And if you want to do a refresher on the bi-weekly horoscopes, those are available on my main channel page. And um, apparently some folks are not getting uh, notifications when it comes to me uploading videos. And uh, I've got some theories about why that might be happening, but uh, I don't want to get too uh, tinfoil hatty uh, <laughs> on the mundane anyway. So let's, uh, let's just say maybe check back every once in a while and see what new stuff pops up. But you go to my main channel page. It's there. And of course, if you are interested in uh, getting a session with me, go to my website, integrativemysticism.com. And if you're interested in seeing the live update I did, that's available as well. And you can check that out on my main channel page where I share a little bit more about the uh, process of, uh, you know, kind of stepping into the Son of Selene role. And we even do, again, a bit of an energy healing exercise and just a fun update catch up chat. Lots of errs and ums in that. I apologize. That's what happens when I have just a bit too much caffeine. Anyway, I will see you all again very soon. Take care.